On one of Andrew's first slides, you already saw the financial highlights. On the top, um, you know, um, all those KPIs uh, showing the great performance that we delivered. And probably I would stop here because for me this is the sixth time I can stand in front of you and talk about the results. And probably this is the first time when I can use the word great uh, to describe that. You know, uh, 27 years in finance and accounting made me very prudent. Uh, and to use the right words, so probably you uh, heard words like solid and resilient uh, in the last five occasions from me. It's really good to be in a position to deliver uh, something that is great. Uh, I don't know what it would take for me to use the word uh, that Charles used a few uh, minutes ago, fabulous, to describe you know, H2 performance. But maybe as a, as a business, we should try that and uh, put me in a difficult position. Um, so on the one hand, um, we had a very strong performance. On the other hand, uh, minus 15% uh, profit after tax. Uh, the one and only difference between the two um, numbers or set of numbers uh, is our decision to increase our provision for certain uh, tax exposures by two uh, billion shillings. I have to disappoint you, I, uh, I am not in a position to disclose more uh, about that matter, but I hope you will not be disappointed because many of you are also uh, shareholders uh, either directly or uh, holding shares in EABL on behalf of your clients and apart from transparency you also want us to protect uh, your interest and currently uh, our interest is to uh, maximize the outcome of these position, uh, positions uh, so um, at the moment I won't be able to share any more details but let's look at the, um, <clears throat> the numbers so starting uh, with volume and um, net sales, so uh, in the second half of the year, we managed to deliver 10% uh, volume growth and 10% uh, net sales growth. So two uh, pieces of good news. One is that uh, finally we are in this double digit growth uh, territory. And on, as you will see later on a broad base, so not driven by one country or uh, one segment, but across the portfolio. And also the fact that um, gearing was uh, more positive than in the first half. So we managed to turn this strong volume growth into um, net sales growth. There were a couple of drivers of that. Uh, one was that uh, Senator uh, stabilized, uh, somewhat recovered in the second half. And since we pay less um, excise on Senator, uh, therefore, uh, in terms of gearing, we benefited uh, from that. But also, mix improved in the second half. And um, since we moved the production of some of the Tusker and the G Tusker brands and Guinness, um, that we sell in Uganda to Uganda, uh, we managed to take advantage of some excise benefits there. Two more messages uh, from this slide. One is on the 14% growth in excise. Um, in this period, uh, there was no major excise increase uh, in any of the countries that we operate in. So finally, we could work in a stable, predictable, uh, environment which allowed us to grow and as a result uh, it also allowed us to deliver more income to the governments, 14% um, uh, growth. So I think uh, this is a good demonstration um, that um, creating an environment um, that allows us to grow uh, also delivers good benefits for government. And the other thing is um, that um, this environment um, after more than six years uh, allowed us to get into this 10% um, double digit growth um, territory, which I think um, is the true potential of our business. If you look at um, the macroeconomics, the industry uh, specific trends, um, I hope um, this also uh, answers some of the questions that I get from you. When uh, is EABA going to deliver its full potential? At least we had six months when um, the conditions allowed us to do that. And we look um, <clears throat> very optimistically on um, F18, F19 to deliver the same. So moving on to some of the details, um, a split of um, NSV growth by country. 
Um, as you can see, uh, so I would start probably from the right. Um, the start of the year, Tanzania, strong double digit growth in both halves. Um, it looks like an acceleration from H1 to H2. That's not uh, really the case. Uh, H2 in F17 was a much weaker, so uh, we had some uh, easier comparables there, but um, the growth was still uh, stable and consistent uh, throughout the year. Um, Uganda, you may remember that in the first half we already had good um, volume growth, but because of the um, negative mix and also the increase uh, on excise uh, in excise for imported beer, uh, we couldn't turn it into net sales growth. Um, that um, became uh, a non-issue in H2. We managed to resolve that, so the volume growth translated into um, net sales growth in the second half. Um, and then Kenya. Uh, Kenya finally back to growth. Um, H1 was in total minus 4, H2 plus 6, so uh, on a full year basis, uh, Kenya is also, you saw on Andrew's slide, in uh, plus 1 percent growth, um, driven uh, by both bottled beer uh, and spirits. Senator is um, the only negative where year on year we had a decline. Uh, but again, going from minus 22 to minus 3 um, from uh, one half to another shows the stabilization and the improvement. Uh, and in Q4, we, already, we were already in growth plus 7. Uh, so Senator, again, slowly but very consistently uh, is coming back and uh, recovering. Looking at beer growth um, by segment, um, very similar picture. It was uh, really good to see that all um, segments within bottled beer were in growth. Um, so bottled beer overall 9% uh, growth year on year. Uh, pre both premium and mainstream accelerated in the second half. And you see somewhat the um, other trend or the opposite trend uh, for value beer, um, excluding Senator. But that's basically um, the reason of us um, fully leveraging the opportunities uh, in premium and mainstream in the second half and deprioritizing um, the cheaper and also lower margin uh, value beer brands uh, in order to maximize the margin in a given uh, capacity. Spirits. Um, driven by uh, mainstream spirits, we already delivered a strong performance in H1, but there was further improvement acceleration in the second half, 33% uh, growth year on year. And what you can also see is um, re our reserve and premium brands, so the Diageo portfolio um, that also recovered in the second half and um, moved into uh, the growth territory. Uh, this was on the one hand driven by better consumer, stronger consumer confidence because spend on these um, brands is um, usually discretionary, so um, some of our consumers came back. Uh, but also um, we referred to some issues with the uncontrolled parallel uh, trading in the fir or importation of the Diageo products in the first half. Um, that's something that we also managed to tackle in the second half. So that's about um, the top line regarding um, um, cost of sales. So moving uh, further down the uh, PNL, uh, cost of sales grew 5%. So behind the volume growth, it means that we managed to uh, deliver savings in Cox per unit. This was driven by um, our productivity agenda that you uh, heard us talking a lot about already. Um, that became uh, part of our life and culture, so it's not a campaign or one-off initiative that delivered 1.7 billion um, savings uh, during F18, uh, the majority driven by procurement, but also we look at um, in the supply chain productivity improvements in a holistic way. So starting from planning, uh, sourcing, make, so the production side, and also move uh, transportation to make sure that our end-to-end -end costs in the supply chain uh, are uh, minimized. 
and uh, we were also benefiting somewhat of um, uh, of mix uh, in H2, uh, the recovery of the senator performance, which is not only uh, cheaper, but also uh, cheaper to produce. So with all that um, gross profit um, grew 4%, uh, and if we move further down the PNL, um, our uh, increased uh, step-up investment in um, advertising and promotion, so selling and distribution uh, costs continued in the second half. In the first half, that was mainly about mitigating the risk on our volumes, um, so try to create more excitement around um, our products in general so that we bring uh, people back into consumption and also uh, we deal with the consumer confidence issue. In the second half, it was much more about um, new innovations, new product launches uh, like Captain Morgan Gold, um, like uh, Black and White, but we also uh, continue to invest strongly in the likes of Tusker <laughs> Cider or uh, Serengeti Light to maximize um, the, the opportunity that we have there. Administrative expenses, um, growth only uh, 3%, so behind inflation, um, again, a good story or a, a demonstration of our focus on uh, productivity. The one-off items, um, not much new in the second half. Um, gain on uh, land sale line, the 700 million represents uh, our H1 profit on the sale of um, a piece of land in Mombasa. And we had some small losses on foreign exchange, primarily driven by um, the weakening of the Ugandan shilling in, the, um, in Q4. Um, so excluding the impact of the tax provision, our underlying operating profit uh, grew by 4%, almost the same as uh, the top line growth. Uh, however, after the uh, provision is down uh, 8%. Taking a look at um, borrowings and the um, interest charge, so um, our net borrowings went up 13%, um, just over 3 billion shillings. As you will see it later, um, the growth in uh, our capital expenditure driven by the Kisumu Brewery uh, was um, more than 7 billion. Um, so the rest we managed to um, fund from very strong uh, own cash flow, so free cash flow, uh, and therefore the, the growth in uh, net borrowings was only uh, 3 billion. You see some increase in uh, finance costs. This is not driven by um, the funding of Kisumu because the 300 million, odd million um, shilling interest that we incurred on uh, that loan and that funding uh, uh, has been capitalized. Uh, the growth that you see here is the result of some uh, changes that we made last year, uh, and those were um, the um, um, increasing the um, maturity uh, profile of our portfolio, so uh, moving from short-term to uh, long-term funding, and especially uh, with the uh, MTN, we incur uh, higher uh, interest costs. Uh, our net debt to EBITDA uh, is uh, outside of our target range, so at 1.34, it's uh, somewhat higher than the 1.25. However, this is in line with our forecast. Uh, when we decided to fund the brewery from uh, loans, uh, we knew that um, for one e uh, year or maybe even two years, this will be the case but um, our strong uh, cash delivery ensures that we will come back uh, to uh, this target range very soon. So um, with this higher uh, finance cost profit um, before tax is down uh, 12% and uh, profit after tax 15%, um, the decline in EPS is higher and that is driven by higher non-controlling interest. Uh, so you heard about the great improvement in Tanzania. That's not only top line. Uh, SBL managed to uh, get back to profitable operations, and because we only own 51% uh, of that business, uh, 
the 49% minority interest also benefited from uh, that improvement. So that is the uh, difference between uh, those two numbers. I already talked about um, very strong cash um, delivery. Uh, I think I mentioned before that uh, on a consistent long-term basis, we want to deliver more than 100% uh, cash conversion. I think I was m maybe a bit too conservative last time when I said the quick wins are over and therefore you shouldn't expect us to go significantly above 100%. Um, we managed to find um, further improvement opportunities um, that we benefited from uh, this year. So the uh, F18 number is 117. I have to uh, admit that this includes some benefit from the fact that uh, the tax provision is a non-cash item, um, but even excluding the impact of that, we will be um, above last year's uh, already high and impressive uh, level. Regarding our investment, um, so uh, last year and sort of on a consistent basis, it was around between five and seven billion, so last year 5.7. Uh, actually, this year um, it uh, grew to 13 billion, uh, and the uh, vast majority of this growth was uh, relating to the Kisumu Brewery. Uh, we said um, it's going to cost us around 15 billion. Uh, I hope we will be able to make some savings from that 15, uh, but in F18 we spent 7.8. And uh, some of the other items that Andrew also talked about, um, so increase in senator capacity in Nairobi, two new spirits lines, one in um, Kenya, the other one in Uganda, um, <clears throat> also um, contributed to this increase. Um, and then on the same slide, you also see some other examples demonstrating that our investment is obviously not only about capacity, but also uh, making sure that we deliver on quality, health and safety, and we also consistently uh, invest in the, um, in the environment. Last slide is on um, dividend. So um, the board um, uh, is proposing to the AGM to keep dividend unchanged uh, year on year. Uh, showing our uh, confidence in the trajectory that the underlying business performance uh, is on, and also all this supported by very strong uh, cash performance. Thank you very much, uh, and I now hand back to Andrew uh, to share with us how he sees the priorities for the business for F19. Thank you. Okay, so, so just um, one more slide. Uh, as I say, we're going into year two of our F22 ambition, and uh, we've, you can see from today's story, we've laid a lot of the foundations to, um, to allow us to get after uh, the, the growth ambitions that we've got over the next few years. Um, in terms of next year, it won't surprise you, or this year actually, we're almost a month into it, won't surprise you that right at the top of the pile is to commercialise the new Kasumu Brewery. Um, and in commercialising the new Kasumu Brewery, we also commercialise over 15,000 farmers. And so it's an important piece of work for us, both in terms of giving us the volume that we need, but also the, 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 uh, the local role we want to play in, the, in those societies. Um, we started building a Kasumu Brewery on the 12th of July last year. And, um, and actually, we did the first, what they call technical brew, uh, on the 17th of July this year. So a really good, um, sort of urgent um, construction of that brewery. It typically takes nearer two years than one year to build a brewery. What we do, what we do now after the, um, after the uh, technical brew is we just complete um, what we call the commissioning of the brewery, which takes another few months. And we believe we'll be selling commercial keg out of that brewery before Christmas. At the same time, and one of the tweaks we made to our strategy was not to go after volume at all costs. So we've done a big piece of work on continuing to um, build our capability on, on examining every line of our P&L so that as we go after the, this growth, we do so in a margin accretive way. And so you, you should see um, in our numbers that we've targeted to expand margin further um, year on year as we get into F19. Really pleased with the 
turnaround on, on our bottled beer business, but we know that um, it's an iterative process building such an established uh, business. So we will continue to fully fund and fully develop uh, our bottled beer business to keep that growing. And at the same time, scotch and vodka, in particular scotch, will continue to take the international assets that Diageo offers EABL and bring them into the country in a local way and, um, and familiarise and engage consumers with, with our international portfolio, as well as um, championing some of the local jewels we've got, such as Kenya Kane, such as Uganda, uh, Waraji. Um, funding all that will continue with a really sharp eye on our productivity agenda. We had a rock record year last year on, on uh, eliminating waste, but we still believe there's more we can do to, um, to get uh, waste out of the wrong parts of the P&L and the investment profile and into the most dynamic parts that will grow the business. So we'll continue to focus on um, productivity. And still, Spirits in East Africa is an enormous um, opportunity. It's still very small in... Um, in uh, Tanzania. We've got lots and lots of capacity for growth here in, um, in Kenya and, uh, and Uganda's somewhere in between and has new capacity. So continuing to understand those new dynamic East African consumers who are coming into our marketplace and deliver them a, a wide repertoire of beers and spirits through our new supply footprint will be a feature of our growth agenda in F19. And then again, back to the uh, East African consumer, dynamic, um, demanding, internationally savvy. So we'll continue to use innovation to make sure that we're engaging our consumers in a contemporary way um, every day of the year. Um, so, so we, we deliver all those, and we, we continue with an ambition to continue to uh, grow the overall business. And I hope that feels logical to you, given, given a strategy I laid out a year ago and how I've just reviewed the first year of implementing that strategy.